What is up, Remodelites? I am Dave with Remodel Media, and for the last 14 years, I have helped people put together kitchens, baths, outdoor kitchens, and various other home renovation projects. In this video, we're going to cover how to pick the best bathtub for you. Here we go. The first decision to make when deciding on which bathtub to get is how you want that bathtub to be installed. Installation number one is typically referred to as a three wall alcove installation. Uh, something like this, where you have the walls on three sides and a door in front. There's usually an apron or a skirt that crosses the front of the tub. And this is your most basic type of installation. I think pretty much all of us have seen it at some point. The second type of installation that you need to decide on, if you didn't want to do an alcove tub, which would have a tub shower combination, you could do a drop-in tub. Something like this one right here. So a drop-in tub is just that. It is a tub where your contractor has built a box and there's a surround and usually this is tile or granite or something like that and the tub is dropped in. As a side note, you can actually undermount a drop-in tub as long as it has a flat edge like some of these that I'm showing you today. So the way they do that is they build up the plywood and take the tile or granite and go over the edge of the tub. The third tub choice is of course a freestanding bathtub. Now many of us, when we think of a freestanding bathtub, many of us think of something like this. Claw foot, cast iron, porcelain enamel, and definitely a very classic look if that's the look you're going for. But there are a number of freestanding tubs, some with jets, some without, that we can do in a variety of different materials that are not claw foot. Now once you've decided on the installation of the bathtub, now you need to decide what material to use. So the first material that you could choose would be plastic. And a plastic bathtub is cheap, but also does not hold up over the long term. So I would only recommend this for a customer who was installing in uh, maybe a house flip or as a landlord, something where you're looking for super low investment. The, the way a plastic tub is formed is you t they take a fiberglass shell and they spray coat it with a gel plastic material that hardens. And so the support is actually coming from the fiberglass, which is not its original intent. Now, some things as a consumer to watch out for with regard to plastic tubs is companies have gotten good at using other words to describe the same or similar materials. So for example, any word that has coat in it, gel coat, last coat, things like that. The other way companies get a little bit sneaky when they're labeling their plastic material is they make it rhyme with acrylic or, or they make the word sound acrylic-ish. Uh, words like acrylex, vicrel, veritech, things that kind of feel like the word acrylic, but in this case, these materials are all a plastic or a plastic composite type of a material. They're not actually acrylic. Again, each material is right for somebody, but make it an informed decision on what material you're going to get. The way an acrylic tub is formed is there's usually a sheet of acrylic that gets bent and formed into the shape of the tub. And then the fiberglass is sprayed on the back as simply an insulation device. So the acrylic actually provides all the support. The insulation comes from the fiberglass. So I must have gotten this question probably a hundred times over the course of my career. It goes something like, well, most of these tubs aren't plastic. They're actually acrylic. Um, what's the difference? You get your nails done, right? Of course. What's the difference between a Lee press-on and an acrylic nail? Oh, I get it. The next material to consider is cast iron. Porcelain enamel cast iron has been a mainstay in the plumbing industry pretty much since 
a Bulgarian immigrant named John Michael Kohler poured enameling powder on a cast iron pig trough, put some feet on it, and sold it as a bathtub. Cast iron tubs come in a lot of different shapes, a lot of different sizes, a lot of different configurations. Cast iron is a cost prohibitive material to work with as compared to acrylic. That's why the prices on cast iron are a lot higher. The other pitfall to cast iron is today's cast iron is not the same as the cast iron was 50 years ago. Today's cast iron is low lead. Now, low lead sounds like a really good thing. Not that I lick my bathtub that often, but I'm not going to get lead poisoning from it. So, your low lead cast iron, however, is also going to be very brittle and more prone to chipping. So this is something as a consumer you need to be aware of as well when making your decision on the bathtub. The last material you could choose would be a composite stone or a composite type of a resin material where this material, which is available in some sinks and some tubs and various other fixtures, uh, is actually, it starts out looking like this and it is a volcanic limestone mixed with the resin and poured into a mold. This particular material is from a company called Victorian Albert out of England. And they've been doing this for, well, quite a while actually. But there are other companies doing some interesting things with the composite stone resin material here. Now, Blue Bathworks is a company that makes composite quartz bathtubs and fixtures. Now, the interesting thing about quartz as opposed to limestone is it's a far denser material. So when these folks actually emboss a tub, uh, that is, they put a design on the side, that design is actually etched into the tub as opposed to like a screen print that some other companies would do. Uh, other companies would do some sort of a screen print, put that on the side of a tub. This company actually, you can, they can etch a design into the side of the tub and have it be structurally sound. Now this material, bluestone, uh, as I mentioned from Blue Bathworks, is a material designed by a designer named uh, Michael Gottschalk. And as the story goes, he was looking for just the right stone uh, for one of his projects because he's an architect and he couldn't find it anywhere. So he went out and had it made and he figured if he had that problem. Well, then other people probably had that problem too. And that is how he began a company called Blue Bathworks. My final note for you on bathtubs is every bathtub that I sell, just like every faucet, just like every, every appliance, is right for somebody. And they're right for different reasons because people are different. So if you want to choose a particular tub, great. Just make sure that the decision you're making is an informed one. I hope you enjoyed that video. As usual, uh, I will leave some relevant links in the description below. And go ahead and click here for more videos. Go ahead and click here to like and subscribe and uh, do all those things. Make sure you ring the bell and I will see you in the next one.